My name is Penny Williams from the STEM department here at ASD and this afternoon we will be at Muldoon Elementary where I will be assisting the fifth graders in Miss Green's class in learning their multiplication facts. Multiplication facts should be mastered by the end of fourth grade but a vast majority of her class is bilingual and has had some difficulty in this area. So I will be going in this afternoon delivering the first of a two-part lesson on multiplication facts. I would presume that these students have been trying to learn the multiplication facts in the old traditional way with drilling and drilling. That is the left hand side of the brain where the language skills are, where you memorize your spelling words, I before E except after C, dropping the Y before adding ING. I will be working with these students as I have for the past 40 years from the right side of the brain. In the right side of the brain is where the patterns and the pictures are. The definition of mathematics is it's a science of pattern and order. And what I have found for many years is that all children, when prevented their multiplication facts, and from the right side of their brain with strategies and pictures, learn them faster and remember them longer. Would uh, any of you who would like to know your multiplication facts better than you know them right now, raise your hand, please. Anybody who'd like to know them better than you know them right now? Okay, is there anybody in this room who thinks, I have them all down. I'm all set. Okay, there's one. But I think, and I'm glad you're here even though you know your multiplication facts, because I think you're going to pick up a lot of cool strategies you had no idea. How many of you have tried to learn your multiplication facts, but they, it's like there's no scotch tape in there, they just don't stick? Yeah, that was me. I was on. You know who else? There was a very famous scientist named Einstein. He thought he wasn't good in math because he couldn't learn his multiplication facts fast enough. So what I want you to know is you learn with two different sides of your brain. You learn with the left side of your brain and you, learn, you can also learn with the right side of your brain. Most of your math for your multiplication facts has been with the left side of your brain and we're not going to work on the left side of your brain today. We're going to work on the right side of your brain. In the right side of your brain is ever so much more fun because that's where all the patterns are, that's where all the pictures are. The definition of mathematics is the science of pattern and order. And all of the patterns are in the right side of your brain. Could you all touch the right side of your head, please? That's the side you're going to be using today for math. So a lot of the things in everyday math use the right side of your brain. But today we're going to do the multiplication facts with the right side of your brain. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't know your multiplication facts well enough, it's not your fault. It is absolutely not your fault. You have tried and it hasn't worked. I guarantee you what I'm going to do for you today is going to work for you. I've been using it for over 40 years and it's always worked for the children in my classes. I'm also going to show you today you have two sets of eyes. You have the obvious set of eyes right here, and you have a set of eyes inside your head, and we're going to use those today. So let's, let's talk about the eyes inside of your head. Would you all close your eyes, please? Picture your kitchen at home. Anything good to eat on the counter? Can you picture it? Okay, you're all seeing it. Open your eyes. Do you see your kitchen? Here, anywhere, do you see it? No. But you could see it with the eyes inside your head, isn't that right? Now the eyes inside of your head work on things that these eyes have seen first, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to work. Now I'm going to get inside your brain today, in that right side. I'm going to hang up some pictures, and if you have some problem paths with math, I'm going to straighten them out for you. And then I'm going to get out, and your brain will be happy. So until we get through this today, you may not trust me getting inside your brain. But at the end of the lesson, I'm pretty sure you will trust me inside your brain. Okay, now let's, um, before we can even begin our multiplication facts, I need to make sure the right-hand side of your brain has a picture of what a multiplication fact is. So, let's look at this paper that you have right here. Let me pull that over a bit so I can figure this way and this way. Here we go. And I'm going to write right on the board instead of back there. 
Now the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to slash out each one of these multiplication signs and change it to the word of. So would you do that on your paper, please? Now that word of shifts the problem from the left side of your brain to the right side of your brain. And let me show you that to prove to that. Um, Anybody have the answer to that very quickly? Quickly? No. Because when the multiplication sign is there, the left side of your brain is saying, what should I do now? What is it I have to do now to solve that? But let me switch it to the right side of your brain by doing this. I would like all of you to read what this says now. Four-fifths of 30. Can any, does anybody in this room know what one-fifth of 30 is? If I break 30 into five parts, do you know how much is in each part? Anyone? What do you think? No, that would be 25. One-fifth of 25, if I broke 25, what do you think? Six. Six. If I broke 30 into five parts, I should be able to put six in each of those parts. Is that right, boys and girls? Five sixes are 30? Five times six is 30. Right. So if one-fifth is how much, everyone? Six. Does you know what four of them would be? Twenty-four. So if you can hear it in the, if you can see it in the right side of your brain, when you put it in the right side of your brain, it says, what do you want to know? You put it in the left side of your brain, it says, how do I do it? Okay, so now, as we go here, I want two sets of what, everybody? Three. Two sets of three. So I'm going to circle, and you please circle with me, two bags. If I want two sets of three, would you hold up fingers for how many marbles you think I'm going to draw in each bag for two sets of three? Two sets of three. Good. How many, Victor? Three. Three. I'm going to put three, so everybody, let's put three marbles in here. Now, I want you talking with your brain also. Sometimes somebody asks you to do something and you say, oh, no, I can't do that. And your brain is saying, could you wait a minute? Could you just give me a minute? I could maybe figure it out. So today you're actually going to talk with your brain. Would you give me a thumbs up if your brain can see two sets of three right there? Give me a thumbs up if your brain can see two sets of three. Okay. Now there's another way to see two sets of three. Let's put down one set of three, everybody right here. And then I'll need one more set right here, and that is two sets of three. Would you give me a thumbs up if your brain can see two sets of three right there? Two sets of three, everyone? Now, in everyday math, you're often given arrays like this. And some students want to connect the dots, like you did in kindergarten. But it isn't a connect the dot thing. It's a corral the dots. There's a set of three. There's two sets of three. All right. And you have your two sets of three inside the box. Would you give me a thumbs up if your brain can see two sets of three right there? OK. So we have, again, two sets of three. So this, when you see two times three, it means you want two sets of three, and that's the way to look at it. OK, this time. I want three sets of two. Think about it and hold up fingers for how many bags you think I'm going to circle this time. How many bags this time? Should, let me see fingers. Five? No, I want three sets of two. Three sets of two. Everybody, how many? Three. three. Circle three bags. Now hold up fingers for how many marbles I'm going to put in each bag. If we have three sets, how many marbles in each bag? Everybody, how many? Two. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's three sets of two. For three sets of two, I need one set of two down here in my base, and another set, and another set. And there are three sets of two. Would you give me a thumbs up if you think you have an idea how to corral the dots over here on this screen? For th looking here at three sets of two, do you think you can go here to three sets of two? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. There's one set of two and it's stacked three high. Now when I went to school, the teacher said, boys and girls, three times two, two times three is the same thing. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Suppose these weren't marbles, but these were gold nuggets in those bags. Now I could invite two of you to come to this party, or I could invite three of you to come to this party, and I'm going to give you a bag of gold nuggets. How many of you care which party you come to? Anybody care? He cares which party he comes to. Anybody else? So some of you do care which party you come to. Hmm. How many of you would rather come to this party? How many of you would rather come to this party? Who can tell me, raise a hand and tell me why you'd rather come to this party and get one of these bags? Tong, why? This is minus two. Right. You're going to get more gold nuggets, isn't that right? If you want to come to this one, you just like to socialize. You want more people. But this is important. Suppose I had $100 to give to you away. I could bring two people up here and give them each a $50 bill. Wouldn't that be nice? Or I could line 50 people up in the hall and give them each $2. Do you care where you are? How many of you would rather be out in the hall? How many of you would rather be here? So isn't it a different picture? when you say two threes or three twos. It's a different picture. What my teacher should have said is the value is the same. The value of what I'm giving away here is six gold nuggets, and the value of what I'm giving away here is six gold nuggets. OK, this is see if we can trick you with this one. Here we want two sets of nothing. Think about two sets of nothing and hold up fingers for how many bags I'm going to circle. Okay, two bags. There's my two sets. Now hold up fingers for how many marbles I'm going to put in each bag. That's right, nothing. Now, do these kind of look like a, a rectangle to you? Yes. Okay, they are rectangles. An array is a group of things. There's an array of trees outside, an array of leaves on the ground, an array of students in here. But every time you multiply, it goes into a what, everyone? A rectangle. So in order to build my rectangular array, I need something to build it with. Do I have something? Two sets of nothing. Do I have something? No. So I have nothing, and then somebody gave me nothing again, and I have how much? Nothing. I can't build anything with that, so you can cross this out. You can't use this. What about this one? Give me a thumbs up if you think I can use it. Give me a thumbs down if you think I can't use it. Good job. We can't use that one. Okay, now I'm in a bit of a problem when I go to the bottom one, because I'm going to have to erase this. And move this up. Well, you know, I don't think we can get that one wrong, do you? No. Hold up fingers for how many bags? Hold up fingers for how many marbles in each bag? Uh-huh, we can't get it wrong. Let's go ahead and do that. Just the bag part. put this back on. You already have it. Do you think you can build the rectangular array for that, everyone? Okay, hold up fingers. How many in the bottom in the base? Four. How many layers high, everyone? Fingers, please. Four. Is 
Does anybody happen to know the answer to 4 times 4? Yes. 16. And 16 is a square number. When I was your age, I had no idea why it was a square number. But look what it built when I did 4 times 4. What did it build? A square. It built a square. square. It is a square number. And you will be soon uh, learning that you can also write it 4 to the second power, which is 4 times itself. And I always, why it, I asked my teacher, why is anything to the second power squared? She said, well, for the very same reason, anything to the third power is cubed. Did I get an answer to my question? No. In fact, now I have how many questions? Now I want to know why anything to the third power is cubed. But can you all see in the right side of your brain why 4 times 4 is a square? When you get to algebra, you'll have something like this. You won't know what the mystery number is, but you know it's going to build a what? Square. 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 It's going to build a square if you actually build it. So let's go ahead and over here and do this. And build our square number. So do you think in the right side of your brain now, you have a pretty good picture of what a multiplication fact looks like if you had to draw it? Could you draw it with bags? Yes. Or could you draw it by filling in a grid? Yes. Or soon? So you'll be very happy to know that you do not really have to tell me the answer to this question. But if I had enough bags, give me a thumbs up if you know how many bags I would have to circle. Give me a thumbs up if you know how many bags I would have to circle. Look what happened here. Remember what happened those. Look at this one and think how many bags I would have to circle. Who can tell me how many bags I would have to circle? Hausman. 28 bags I would have to circle. Now who can tell me how many marbles would go in every single one of those 28 bags? Same. Yes, wouldn't that be a lot of marbles? If I put 74 marbles into every single one of 28 bags, that'd be a lot of marbles. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, we're three, yes? Altogether, you would have 2,073 marbles. Ah, we said it was a lot of marble. Now, we're through with this side of the paper, but I do not want you to turn your paper over. Do I want you to turn your paper over? No. No, no thank you. Would you put your pencil down for just a minute? So, boys and girls, how are you with your zero tables? Give me a thumbs up if you're pretty good with your zero tables. Okay. What is three times zero? Zero. Eight times zero? Zero. Forty-eight times zero? Zero. Seven hundred sixty-three times zero? Zero. Two thousand nine hundred forty-two? Zero. How can you give me the answer before I finish the question? Who can tell me how you can give me the answer before I finish the question? Most of you did. Who can tell me? Yes? Because anything times zero is zero. Right. If I want 736 zeros, what am I going to have? Zero. But you know what's interesting when you put the zero first? See what that tells you. Zero times eight. You know what that says? How many sets do I want? Zero. Right. Your eights are beautiful. They really are just lovely, but no thank you, I'm not buying any. Right? Every time the zero comes first, it says, no, thank you, I'm not. Fine. I don't want any. I'll just have nothing. Thank you. So we're all OK with our zeros. How about our ones? We're OK with our ones. One times eight? Eight. One times 42? 42. One times 76? 76. One times, anybody have the answer for me now? Anybody have the answer? I just said one times. Can you give me my answer? No. Because, because you don't have answer. I haven't told you what I want one of. Isn't that right? OK. How are we with our two tables? Give me a thumbs up if we're OK with our two tables. Everybody who's OK with their two tables, you're all OK? And no, you're not. No, you're not. So I need some honest people in this room. And I get honest people, even when I'm doing this in high school, who'll say, you know what? 
I still have a bit of trouble with some of my twos. Do I have some honest people in here who will tell me and say they really do have a bit of trouble with some of their twos? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Look at that. Good. Thank you for being honest. Okay, now, what I want to do, your brain sometimes has a path for one thing and a path for something else, and they never connect. What I want to do is connect those for you. So, well, let's see where you are. How, are we okay with two times zero, everyone? Zero. zero. Two times one? Two. Two times three? Six. Two times four? Eight. Two times five? Ten. You see, then we run out of fingers, right? So if you have trouble with your twos, isn't it only two times six, two times seven, two times eight, and two times nine? Aren't those the only twos that give you trouble? Well, watch this. Six plus six. Everyone, what is six plus six? Twelve. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that two sixes? Isn't that two sets of six? Yes. So if six plus six is twelve, isn't two of those sixes also going to be twelve? Yes. Right. So everybody, what's seven plus seven? Fourteen. Isn't that... Two sevens? Yeah. So what's two times seven? Fourteen. Everybody, what is eight plus eight? Sixteen. So what's two times eight? Sixteen. Because aren't there two eights there? Yeah. And nine plus nine? Eighteen. So two times nine is? Eighteen. For how many of you will that fix those facts? Just to realize they're your addition facts. That's all they are. When you see two times a number, you can think that number plus itself. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to turn my paper over. You should not. Should you turn your paper over? No. Thank you. How are you with your ten tables? What's two tens? Two times ten? Twenty. Three tens? Thirty. Five times ten? Fifty. Seven times ten? Seventy. Boys and girls, when I work in your brain, I need total access to your brain, and my only access to your brain is your eyes and your ears. So your eyes are always on me, your ears are always listening, and there's nothing in your hand, because that takes part of the focus of your brain from me. Okay, when I say to you, can you count by twos, you will say, yes, we can count by twos, let's go. What will that sound like? Can you count by twos? Yes. yes. We can count by twos, let's go. Then you'll really count by twos and watch me to tell you when to stop. We ready to try that? Yeah. Boys and girls, can you count by twos? Yes. yes. We can count by twos, let's go. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Boys and girls, can you count by fives? Yes. yes. We can count by fives, let's go. Five, five. 10, 50. Boys and girls, can you count by tens? Yes. yes. We can count by tens. Let's go. 10, 10 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Great. Boys and girls, can you count by nines? Yes. yes. We can count by nines. Let's go. Nine. 18, 18 26, Okay. You will be happy to know when I do this with adults, they do the same thing. It's like, yes, we can count by nines, nine, 18, blah, 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 after that. Okay, now here's what. I promise you that in about six or seven minutes, you'll all be able to count by nines as fast as you can count by twos for life. That's my promise to you. Yes. There's a match trick all the way up to ten. Yes, there is. Okay, so, eyes on me. Remember, I told you six to seven minutes, you can count by nines for life as fast as you can count by twos. If I have eight candies in my hand, how many more do I need to make nine? One. one. So here we go. If I say eight, you say one. If I say one, you say eight. Don't let me mess you up. You might even want to close your eyes, but don't let me mess you up. Are you ready? Eight. One. Eight. One. Eight. One. Eight. One. One. Eight. One. Eight. One. Eight. One. One, eight. one, eight. 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 eight, one. So if I have eight, how much more do I need to make nine? One. And if I have one, how much more do I need to make nine? Eight. eight. What if I have seven candies? Now how many do I need to make nine? Two. Three. Are you ready? 
Seven. Two. Seven. Two. 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 Seven. Two. Seven. Two. Seven. Two. Two. Eight. One. Eight. So if I have seven candies, how many more do I need to make nine? Two. And if I have two, I need? Seven. What about if I have six? Three. Oh, and that's easy because six plus six is three, right? Here we go. Six. Three. Three. Six. Three. Six. Three. Six. Three. Six. Three. Three. Six. Seven. Two. Two. Eight. One. Eight. Here's the last one. If I have five, I need four. If I have four, I need five. And that one's easy to remember because they are side by side. They both begin with F. They both have four letters. They're right there. Are we ready? Five. Four. Five. Four. Five. Four. Five. Four. Five. Four. Five. Four. Five. 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 Eight, one, one eight, seven, two, two, two seven, six, three, three, three six, five, four, four, five, boys only. Eight, one, one, eight, seven, two, two, two seven, seven, six, three, three, three six, five, four, four, five, girls only. Eight. One, eight, seven, two, two seven, six, three, three, three six, six, five, four, four, five. Okay, here we go. I am going to show you how magnificent your brain is, and I'm going to show you what the eyes on the inside of your head can do. So we're going to start here over on this side of the board. Can everyone see this side of the board? Okay, if I don't have any, any candies at all, I need nine. But if I have not, and if I have nine, and I want nine, I don't need any, right? If I have eight, I need? One. If I have one, I need? Eight. If I have seven, I need? Two. If I have two, I need? Seven. What if I have six? Three. And if I have three? Six. And if I have five? Four. And if I have four, five, five. now there are your nine facts, boys and girls. Remember I told you the definition of mathematics is a science of pattern and order? Can someone raise a hand and tell me any pattern you see in the nines? <gasps> any oh. pattern. Peter, what do you see? It goes nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Mm -hmm. What about over here? Anybody see another pattern? Anything else? Victor? Are oh, I see what he means. I have an 18 and I have a what? 81. I have a 27, but I also have a? 72. A 36 and a? 63. And a 45 and a? 54. It's like somewhere in here they flip over, right? Yep. Good. Another pattern. Jeffrey? You do? It is counting by nines. Right? Someone says it's like adding 10 but taking one away. Is that right? Yeah. If I add 10 to 9, I get 19, but I take one away, I'm at 18. If I add 10 to this, I get 28, but if I take one away, I'm at 27. Okay, how about this? Nine. Nine, 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 nine. If you add the two digits anywhere in the 9 table, they make what? It's called the divisibility rule of nine. Let's look at this number. Um, 324. Let's add up the digits in there. Three plus two. Five. Five plus four. Nine. That number is divisible by nine. I don't know what it is. We're not going to look. How about this one? Four plus four. Eight. Plus three. Eleven, is that divisible by nine? No. no. Right. How about this one? Two hundred sixty-five thousand four hundred thirty-seven. What do you think? No. 
Let's go. We got to figure it out. Let's go. Two plus six. Eight. Eight, eight plus Eleven. five. Eleven. Eight. Twelve. Eight. Plus five. Twelve. Thirteen. 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 Plus four. Seventeen. 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 Plus three. Twenty. Plus seven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Let me just write down twenty-seven. Yes. 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 Cool, huh? It added up to a multiple of nine, and when you add them together, you have nine. Okay, now, are you ready to be able to count by nines for the rest of your life? Yes. Then don't take your eyes off this board. Okay, we're going to use Three times you're going to count with me while I point to the multiple of nine. Are we ready? Kind of easy because I go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, right? Two more times, let's go. One more time. We're going to begin to turn them over to the eyes inside your head. Let's go. 90. Boys and girls, can you count by nines? Yes. yes. We can yes. count by nines. Let's go. Nine. Okay. Did I keep my promise? Yes. Did I tell you in six to seven minutes you'd be able to count by nine? You want to do it again? Yes. I know you want to do it again. Let's go. Boys and girls, can you count by nine? Yes. yes. We, we can, can count, count by nine. nine. Let's go. Nine, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, Boys and girls, your eyes will see them right here all year long and on any whiteboard. They're right here. Do you see them right here? The eyes inside of your head see them. It, it's a little strange when, like, the principal walks in tomorrow and your teacher's saying, okay, boys and girls, Mr. Green's saying, let's count by nines, and you, she's pointing to this blank board, and you're all counting by nines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I don't want you doing your answers to multiplication facts by counting. I don't want you to do it in fives, and I don't want you to do it in nines. So we need a better way. And here it is. And it's not this, by the way. It isn't 9 times 4 is, it's not that. Because number one, it's so embarrassing in middle school next year. And number two, you have to put your pencil down. You have to do that. You have to figure out what it is. You have to pick your pencil up. You don't have a chance of finishing your times this. OK? So here's a much better way. Do we all know what 10 times 6 is? 60. Isn't that as low as you can go in the 60s? Yeah. What happens when you drop down one from 60? You're in the what? 50. 50s. 54. So this is going to be in the 50s. So I look at this and I say, which number, everyone tell me, which digit's not a 9? What's one less than 6? 5. Five. Boys and girls, which one's not a 9? One less than 4. 
Boys and girls, which one's not a nine? Seven. One less than seven? Six. Is that pretty easy to do? Yes. That gives you the tens place all the way down, right? Mm -hmm. Now the only thing to do is what goes with five to make nine. When I said five, you said? Four. When I said three, you said? Six. When I said six, you said? Three. How easy is that? To do your nines, right? It'll work for you forever, and you don't have to embarrass yourself with this finger thing going on, and it's much faster. So would you turn your paper over again and listen to me carefully. In this column, what is one less than six? Five. You can't see it here, but can you see it on your paper? Yeah. One less than six is? Five. Put a five down, and that's all I want, not the rest of it. Please don't do the rest. Oh, good, you get it. OK. Which one's not a nine, everybody? One less than four? Three. Which one's not a nine? Eight. One less? Seven. Okay, when you get down here, you've got to take one of the nines, right? Can you all do that? Can you just put that digit down for me all the way down? Yes. Figure out which one's not a nine and put down one less? Just that. Don't give me the whole answer. Just look at which one's not a nine and put down one less. Okay, how do we do? First we had a five. Okay, guys, give me the rest. What's next? Four. Four. Three. three. One less than the Seven. four is Seven. three. Okay, let's go next. Seven. Was that pretty easy to do? Yes. Okay, so now let's do the rest of it. When I said five, you said? Four. When I said three, you said? Two. Oh, three plus what is nine? Three, six. Remember three and six? When I said seven, you said? Two. When I said six, you said? Three. Okay, to help some of you. Some of you have trouble remembering? There you go. So with a little practice, are you going to be all right with your nines? Yes. OK. Would you put your pencil down? This is a great time of year to be talking about this. I'd like to talk football for a minute. When I, my team makes a touchdown and scores the extra point, how many points do I have? Does anyone know? Make the touchdown, you run across the goal line, and you score the extra point. Nine, seven. Eight. Who's that? Seven points. You get six when you run across the goal line. And you get one more point if you kick it, the extra point. You get seven. If you did that seven times, wouldn't that be seven times seven? Yeah. For the only NFL football team with a number for a name. 49ers. San Francisco 49ers. So we're going to work with the eyes inside of your head once again. Here we have the football. 7 times 7 is 49, and here is a picture of the helmet of the San Francisco 49ers. All right. I'm not going to put it here because your brain would rather I not put it on top of the 9s. I'll put it right here. Okay, boys and girls, what do we see here? Seven Se times seven equals 49. Which is seven touchdowns for the 49ers. Again? Seven times seven equals 49. One more time? Seven times seven equals 49. What do the eyes on the inside of your head see right there? Seven times seven equals 49. Okay. What do the eyes on the inside of your head see right there? Seven times seven equals forty-nine. What do the eyes on the inside of your head see right here? Seven times seven equals forty-nine. 
What do the eyes on the inside of your head see over here? Okay, so seven times seven is? Now, boys and girls, while we're doing multiplication facts, we're also really doing division facts. Because if I put 49 in here, what has to be outside? Seven. How many of them? Seven. There has to be one here and one here. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Now, when I ask adults, what were the hardest facts you ever had to learn? Some will say, I still can't remember 7 times 7, 7 times 8, and 8 times 7. Are we okay with 7 times 7? Yes. 7 times 7 is? 49. For the 49ers. So look at this. 5, 6, 7, 8. What if I put a multiplication sign here, and I put an equal sign here? Right? Well, you can always have the answer in front. 7 times 8 is what? Okay, now I call that my buddy system. Whenever 7 and 8 are together, they are looking for 5 and 6. Whoops, sorry. To be with them. And here they are. Some think they look more like aliens. So, But notice how these two have their arms crossed like a multiplication sign? Yes. These two have their arms out like an equal sign? Mm -hmm. So should we put it here? No. 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 What's there? Of course, anyone can see the football is there. We'll put it here. Okay, so let's do it from the inside. Say with me. Seven. Seven times eight equals fifty-six. From the outside. Eight times seven equals fifty-six. Again. Seven times eight equals fifty-six. Outside. Eight times seven equals fifty-six. On the inside. Outside? Eight times seven equals fifty-six. Inside? Seven times eight equals fifty-six. Outside? Eight times seven equals fifty-six. What do the eyes inside your head see right here, starting on the inside? Seven times eight equals fifty-six. Outside? Okay, everybody, what is 7 times 7? 49. 7 times 8? 8 times 7. Now we're going to talk about the five tables. It's the last thing we're going to work on today. I'd like, you know how you were honest with me about your twos? How many of you will be honest with me to say that when you have to put down an answer to a five fact, you count by fives to get there? Thank you. Awesome. So I'm going to show you some ways to get there much faster than counting because it takes too much time. Remember, I didn't want you to count by nines to get those either. So 10 elephants. What is half of 10 elephants? Five. Five. OK. 10 zebras. What's half of 10 zebras? Five. 10 sixes. What's half of 10 sixes? Five. Five sixes. So what are 10 sixes, everybody? How much are 10 sixes? Five. Tell me what 10 sixes are. Six. 10 times 6. 10 sixes. Six. What's half of 60? Twelve. Twelve. Half of 60. 30. 30. 30. So one strategy is to multiply it by 10 and cut it in half. Do you agree? OK. Stay with me now. Make sure you're totally focused because I want, if I put this number up here and say, does it have a decimal, you better say yes, it has a decimal. Does that number have a decimal? Yes. yes, it has a decimal. Can you see the decimal? No. no. So here's the secret. Whenever you cannot see a decimal, you pretend it's all dollars. So if that's four dollars, is my decimal going here? No. Here? Yes. Yes. Now let's see if we learned the right answers here. Does that number have a decimal? Yes. Yes. Can you see it? It's all dollars. Is the decimal going here? No. Here? No. Here? Yes. To make $16, it's going here. And the next one is where people get tricked 
So let's make sure you don't. Don't be tricked. Does that number have a decimal? Yes. 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 Can you see it? Yes. No. When you can't see it, it's all what? Dollars. It's all dollars. Be careful. Is the decimal going here? No. Is it going here? Yes. If I put it there, is it all going to be dollars? No. Is it going here? No. Is it going here? Yes. Every number has a decimal. But when it's all dollars or all whole numbers, it can hide out if it wants. Do we get that? Okay. So. Hi, we need your attendance for this afternoon, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we all agree that 5 is half of 10? Yes. Okay. So, what happens to my number 4 when I move the decimal place over 1? What does the 4 turn into, everybody? A 40. 40. What if I start with 40 and I move the decimal over one place, the 40 becomes what? So is it true that every time I move the decimal one place to the right, my number gets 10 times bigger? So let's see what happens here. What is half of four? Two. Move the decimal one place to the right, and what do I have? Zero. Twenty. Half of eight? Four. Move the decimal one place to the right? Forty. Half of six? Three. One place to the right? Three. Half of twenty-four? Twelve. One place to the right? Zero. Half of forty-eight? To half of that, half of that. 24. One place, move the decimal one place to the right. 24. Half of 62. 40. Move the decimal one place to the right. 10. Let's do half of this one. Half of this. 60. Half. 42. Move the decimal one place to the right. 3,420. Okay. You've cut the number in half because 5 is half of 10. Is that right? Somebody have a question they want to ask me about this? What kind of numbers did I use? What kind of numbers besides the five? What kind of numbers did I multiply five by? Even numbers. So, so doesn't somebody have a question? You should have a question. Why are they all even? So your question is, does it work for what? Odd. Does it work for odd? No. Talk to your shoulder partner and tell your shoulder partner whether you think this is going to work for odd or not. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you think the pattern will work for odd numbers. Give me a thumbs down if you think it won't. Hang on. Can somebody tell me what half of three is? If I have three candy bars I have to break between two people, what is half of three? One and a half. One and a half, do you agree? Yes. Who can tell, what, what is the decimal for one and a half? One and Is it this? Yes. What happens when I move that decimal one place to the right? It's one What do I get? No, I get... 15. Is 5 times 3 15? Yes. Everybody, what's half of 7? Uh, 3 and a half. Written as 3 and 5 tenths. Move the decimal one place to the right. Everybody, what do we have? Five. Half of 9? Four, 4 and a half. Or 4 and 5 tenths? Move the decimal one place to the right. What do we have? Five. Okay, about over here. If you know half of 40, you know half of 41. Raise your hand. If you know half of 40, you know half of 41. Jeffrey? 20 and a half. Move the decimal over one place, and what is 5 times 41, everybody? 25. If you know half of 64, 
you know half of 65. 34 and a half. 30 what? Four. No, what's half of four? If four. this was two. Right, and a half. Good job. Okay, everybody, what is five times 65? If you know half of 82, stay with me. If you know half of 82, you know half of 83. You want to give it a shot, Victor? Think of half of 82. You can think of half of 82. Half of the 8, half of the 2. Yes, and? Right. If you know half of 426, you know half of 427. Okay, everybody. This is what's going here. What's half of this? What if this were a 6? It'd be a? Move it over. There you go. Boys and girls, I want you to do your five facts right now any way you want. You can think of ten of them and cut them in half, or you can try cutting it in half and moving the decimal one place to the right. But try not counting by fives. It just takes too much time. Boys and girls, that's all we're going to do from this time. Would you give me a thumbs up if you learned some facts today you didn't know before? Do you feel pretty good about your nines? I tell you what's going to happen tomorrow morning. You're going to get up. Before you get out of bed, you're going to do a brain check to see if the nines are still there. I promise you, they're still there. If you go home tonight and ask the adult in your house or an older brother or sister to count by nines, do you think you can count by nines faster than they can? Close your eyes and picture the board. Read them right off the board. That white board can go with you everywhere because it's on the eyes inside your head. Do you trust me inside your brain, hanging up pictures? May I come back in a week and give you the rest of the facts? You feeling pretty good about them? Yes. Okay. Isn't it fun learning math on the right side of your brain? Yes. yes, it is. And boys and girls, I promise you they'll stay. They'll stay for you.